Hello, welcome back to the channel. One thing Grim Dawn is lacking is a tutorial. I'm going to do my best to do a quick tutorial. This will give you, as a new player, a character that is fairly defensive, does decent damage, and will get through all the content of Act 1, including Warden Krieg with very little issues now you may think you do not want to play as a soldier that's fine play this character acquire the gear learn the basics of leveling up allocating skill points messing about with devotions picking up gear that matches the type of damage you're doing learn all that stuff and then create a new character and use your newfound knowledge to create the character you want. The soldier will get you through as much of the game as you want to get through. So what I'll do first of all is show you where it's at at the moment at level 21. Didn't take that long to get to 21. And then I will quickly whiz through footage of the leveling process running around where certain bits of gear are, which quest rewards to pick up. This is the soldier as it is. I've got a little bit of an overlay on this so you can see the weapon I bought that it's very important that you get a weapon that does not convert your physical damage out to another damage type so if you if you pick something up that converts the damage get shot of it go with something basic stay basic that's what you've got to do the ring green ring the slith ring is a quest rewards easy to get show you where to get that from the purple ring the leobinus ring you won't be able to get that until you get into forgotten gods area but once you get into forgotten gods area after killing krieg it's very easy to get and it's really good because of the amount of elemental resistance on it you've got two options for the amulet the shamblers thing that buffs force wave that's wonderful you can go and target farm that off a boss quite easy to get the sisters amulet is a quest reward the helmet is a target farmable thing that you get from the guy you have to kill to get the sister's amulet quest rewards. You can get that anyway. The chest armor is a quest reward. Shoulder armor is always in the same place. You can just go and get it. It's, it's part of a quest, but you don't need the quest. You can just go and pick it up. The relic, once you find the smith, I'll show you where he is. You can go and craft the relic. It's a default item. You've got to have um, either killed Krieg or some other thing that will give you a brain matter that you need to craft that but that's okay you can just go ahead and get that the medal is a default craftable item so once again once you've got the blacksmith you can make yourself one of them if you had another one of those drop trousers stroke pants gloves boots find them craft them buy them whatever just get stuff that either buffs your defenses in a good way or buffs your damage skill in a good way so that's that now where this guy is leveling up i put all my attribute points into physique it doesn't buff a damage type it buffs your defensive ability and your health and your ability to generate health out of combat all that good stuff so yeah stick all your points in physique like i said keep it basic you don't have to overthink this now this is what it looked like. Leveling up. Force Wave. Force Wave's an interesting one. It's got one point in it and it's got a bit of gear that puts three extra points in it. With Force Wave, what you'll find is you'll hear that it's a good skill to use. You'll pick it as a soldier and you'll start putting points into it. And then you'll keep running out of energy. Because the Force Wave, the first node in that skill, you notice there's three. There's one node there, there's another node there, there's another node there. That one, if you keep putting points into it, the energy cost goes up. And as a soldier, you do not have much energy. You do not, do not have much spirit to regenerate energy. So put one point in that and then take a close look. Oh, actually, yeah, put a point in that as well. That's the thing that allows you to spam force wave with no cooldown with a two handed weapon. One point in there, one point in there. And then as you're leveling up, these things rend in force which puts a whole stack load of physical damage onto force wave an internal trauma which adds the damage over time version of physical damage plus some bleeding plus some slow what you'll notice there is there's no additional energy cost so you can max those boys out and it does not increase 
the energy cost of force wave one point in there max that max up don't worry i'll go through the whole leveling thing in a sec i'll show you each stage of what i leveled up i didn't get it spot on i mean i was messing around i knew what i wanted to do but um yeah blitz it's a one pointer it's getting those extra points from gear war cry is a one pointer that thing is one point it's just an extra thing to have going on and i've got a devotion on that that will do damage so where war cry doesn't specifically do damage with that celestial power on there it does and that has a 100 percent chance because war cry's got a long cooldown i'll cover all this as i go up i stuck a point in that because i just wanted some resistances and a little bit of extra damage buff by then i was you know i had done what i wanted to do when i got to 25 here i had done what i wanted to do and i leveled up um i'm talking about 25 mastery points i put a few extra points in there devotions pretty straightforward again i'll show all this i've got three points i haven't allocated i grabbed this thing because it's a physical damage soldiery thing and it's got that on it you can you can use other ones that's not the best it just worked well with what i was doing with this build there's the gear that was a quick overview i mean if you know what you're doing you can just go in and do that but i will now go through the leveling up i saved some items that's an that's an example of a belt that buffs force wave what i found is those two extra points in force wave giving me a bit of an energy overhead so i just got shot of it i preferred you know just that that's um optional thing that dropped there's something else to drop it's got battle fury on it that's really good critical attack and all of a sudden you're doing a whole load more of everything those are all right it's got a granted skill on it that goes off when you get hit like i said i i was doing all this using the most basic boring kind of gear i could get and it's really it's really good it worked out well right let's wind this back to level one and start off with what the hell did i do with this how did how is it so good and trust me it is good i mean it's um creek's dead i haven't died and i've been playing for two and a half hours and i was taking it slow and doing a lot of shuffling around in vendor stuff so yeah so you could play for a couple of hours and you're going to have a character like this that is rock hard i'll give a demonstration about rock hard it is later if you want to skip ahead to that with some time stamps in the description meanwhile let's wind the clock back to level one and get on with how did i level this thing up and where did i get the gear from right you get your new character created you go into normal difficulty on the main campaign skip the intro cinematic i recommend watching the intro cinematic it's pretty good right i'm now zooming out with my mouse button i'm clicking on this button down here compass map toggle to make the map toggle bigger i'm not going to bother talking to that guy but you know talk to him get the quest you still got the quest the quest is to talk to john bourbon Let's talk to john bourbon walk up to here where this bit of fiery ground is next to this guy and rotate the camera until you can see the crudely scrawled note pick up the crudely scrawled note reset your view you might have to figure out which button does that. It's number pad two for me. Go into your inventory. It's I key. C key does the same thing. You see you've got this crudely scrawled note. Down here you've got 69 XP. So next level up. If you right click on the crudely scrawled note you get 50 XP. Immediately leg it out of the gate. Search this body. There's always something useful on it. It's a gun. It's better than what I've got. But I'm not going to bother swapping it for now. I'm going to go straight up and get a two-handed sword after I've got to level two, which is going to involve killing maybe four or five zombies. They go down easy enough. Right, so I'm level two. As soon as I'm level two, I go into the character tab, which is C or I. C for character, I for inventory gets the same thing open. I'm going to put a point into physique. And I'm going to go into my skill window, which is you either click on that thing down there or you press S or whatever it is on Xbox, I've no idea. I'm going to choose soldier. The bit you need to slightly pay attention to. Two points in the mastery, one point in force wave.
so what you've got there, if you put it on as your normal left mouse attack, when force wave isn't going off, it will do a default attack, which is probably what you want. So leave it on there like that for now. Level two. Three points in the mastery. Do not put more points in force wave. Leave that as a one point, okay? Now you're going to go and get a two-handed weapon. Right, so this is where we are. That's where you start off down here, Devil's Crossing. You come up this path. If you come straight up here, it's this building, not that building, it's this building here that you want to go to. So you've got this one, which is by this hidden path. There's a hidden path here, perhaps later on in life. You don't want to go down there just yet. There's this building here with a dodgy bookcase that you can smash. There's nothing in there of any use. However, you want a decent two-handed weapon, two-handed melee weapon straight away. Come over here. Not that. There's this body, rotting corpse. It's always got Hevel's greatsword on it. The rare item. It's more like a lightning damage thing than physical, but... It's pretty good. We'll use that for now. Read that law note. But just to show you where that was. That's where you start off. Run up here. Either go around this way, but you can't because there's a random thing blocking it. That's not always there. Sometimes this bit's blocked. Come around here, go to this house, get Hevel's Greatsword. It's that. Equip it. Now, you can either go around here exploring and reading law notes, or you can just run straight up to where the main quest bad guy is. I'm just going to go and get a couple of law notes from this building over here. Let's level up a bit quicker. See, she's swinging that every time. If you put it on... The right mouse button right i'll use the right mouse button to attack now and it will work differently see it's not it's not attacking it doesn't attack on the non force wave attacks at the moment we'll fix that in a minute just check what you've got i mean anything that's decent equip it Sometimes that's open and you can run straight across there. Right, so if you've come if you've come straight out, Devil's Cross it. You just follow this road all the way up. Get across that bridge, either across it or around here. Just keep going up here, just keep following this path. As soon as you get to that, double back on yourself. Go over here. There's a bloke to rescue. Level four, point in physique. Right, what you want to do now, you want to stick a point in tremor, which allows you to spam force wave with a two-handed weapon. Put the other two points into your mastery bar. Now you can swap this round. You can put move to on that, and you can put force wave on right mouse button. And she will spam away with that. It does less damage, but look at it go. And because you've only got one point in it, it's not an issue for energy. Talk to this guy in this house, rescue him. Immediately get the map up, map back to there. You can't go and talk to him yet, he's inside the prison. You've got to beat the reanimator, progress the main quest before you can get into the prison. Right, so fight all these guys, go up here, you're going to start collecting ether crystals, sometimes there's one up here. There's one. You need a few ether crystals for a quest. Quickly, we'll get this quest quite quickly. To give you an extra skill point, you also need one to restore a shrine. 
That'll be obvious in a sec. Level 5 point in physique. Right, what we're aiming to do now is we're aiming to get to Blitz. Next level, I can put a point in Blitz. What you can also do is have a look at what I've got. Not many. Yeah. You can start using attack damage components at level 5. Searing Ember, Chilled Steel, and the Lodestone thing, which is Lightning. I'm not going to bother for now, but if you want to, you can stick one of those on your weapon. I'm just going to go with what I've got. Because I want to demonstrate what you can do without those, just in case you get unlucky and you don't get any drop. If I start using one, it will be a bit of an unfair advantage if you haven't got one. Because at this point, I mean, you should have all the stuff I've got. All right, you might not have those decent. I mean, they're all right. They're not brilliant. Just put those back on just in case. Okay, so at this point, you should have exactly the same stuff I've got. You've got your starter gear. All this rubbish and that thing which you can get there's no question about it it's always there you just go and get it pick it up right reanimators down here and see how bad this is generally keep an eye on your health and don't bother looking at his health too well you can going down slowly not going to be the fastest kill on record ever but it's okay Keep an eye on your health. You don't particularly want to die. If it gets iffy, you can just run away and you'll get your health back. You get your, you get your health back while you've got this constitution stuff showing here. Once that golden glow completely runs out, you won't get your health back naturally outside of combat. What I tend to do is just, well, if it gets down to about three quarters, just run away, let it charge back up, save use and health potions. I know what you're thinking. I mean, you're thinking, oh, you know, that's real slow. It should be quicker. It doesn't matter. Because what we're going for here, we're doing a long game. This is, this is going to end up being ridiculously powerful and strong and a great laugh. At the moment, it's just, you know, you're just doing what you've got to do to complete the quest. Run away, get your health back. Maybe try not to stand in the ether puddles. Right. 
Kaisog's down. Kill the remaining few zombie shamblers off. See what we've got. You know, by now you'll have a you'll start collecting some decent stuff. That's actually more like what you're going to want. Because ultimately you're going to want to use a weapon that's doing physical damage and not converting your physical damage to anything else. That's okay, I'm going to use that. If you want to know what it's doing to Force Wave, you can watch there. It's not making any difference. You're not losing any damage. But pretty soon we're going to start buffing physical damage. So using that lightning weapon wouldn't be your best option. Right, that constitution thing that does that health regen. See that food ration up there? Watch this now. There you go. You get most of it back. Right, what we've got here is a shrine. You can see them on the map. It shows up on the map there, Ruin Shrine. It shows up on the mini map, Ruin Shrine. You go and click on that. What it's saying is it's saying the Ruin Shrine needs a to be restored by donating an item to it, Ether Crystal. I've got six of them. I think I need four for the quest, it might be three, so that's okay. I pick up just then. Uh, anyway, right. So what we're going to do with the devotions, we're going to go for this bull up here, which is a bunch of physical damage. You hover over that. Affinity requirements one blue. If you find blue, there's blue. Stick one point in there. Don't worry too much about what that's giving you defensibility. I'll, we'll reclaim that as soon as we fill bull out. And what you can do now, let's go back to DC cash all this stuff in get a bunch of XP for a, a load of different quests talk to John Bourbon cash that in what you've started doing now is you've started earning Devil's Cross and Reputation got some rep you need to get up to friendly to unlock a quest that will give you the doublet chest armor as a quest reward so that's your that's your goal get friendly with them do all the quests around here most of them will give you reputation gains with devil's crossing Welcome some of them don't he wants ether crystals right let's see how many he actually needs i'll bring some back and he needs four right so i've already got four here they are yeah, I got a skill point. I didn't get any rep for that. Did I level up? Yes. One point in physique. One point in blitz. Three points in the mastery. So at this, at this point, there's a one pointer, a one pointer, a one pointer. Everything else has gone in there. That's not too hard to remember, is it? Hopefully. Barnabas wants scrap. I'm pretty sure I don't have five scrap yet. Where can I find it? I'll get the scrap you need. Uh, how many does he need? Two. I got, he needs five. I've got two. I'll get some more now. Should be alright. He lets you in. This is the guy that we rescued just now. He will give me some scrap. Rescuing him. There it is. I've now got three pieces. Go up here. Talk to the spirit guide. This is the one who lets you reclaim skill and devotion points. Don't bother talking to her for now. This lady gives you the quest when you get to friendly rep to get the chest armor. Here is your stash. Dump that in there. Yeah, I haven't cheated. All this stuff on here... Um, this was done on the first character that I did this with. This is just, I just redid the start because the point allocations 
into force wave i wasn't happy with how i started off doing it it wasn't clear enough in the explanation in the original video so i just redone it that's why this guy's called tutorial 2 so yeah so all this stuff was picked up on the first character this is the quest where you have to go and get milton milton's hat is cool and the amulet she gives you is pretty good if you haven't got anything better Right, so that's everything done round here. I think at this point I can switch back to previously recorded footage of the original character and it should make some kind of sense. And here we go, and it probably won't make any sense. Well, I did, this is the original character I did this on, and I'd explored a little bit further than the burial cave, so I'd already leveled up to six. This is now seven. I'm going to stick a point in there eventually moving swiftly on next thing to do go back to where i came from see i'd come out the other side of the burial cave i killed pharos in that house on the right he's a quest guy thing is the quest doesn't give you any devil's crossing reputation so whether you do it or not just for the XP, just for the quest rewards, bit of money. Well, obviously the next thing I did was quit the game and went back in. Sold a bunch of stuff. Fine, well spent. I'm still weak. Yeah, I need more scrap best thing to do is to just push on north you can go into the burial cave and come out or you can loop around here get you to the same area pretty much there's level eight yeah so don't put any more points in force wave put points into the force wave nodes that don't cost you any energy to use them Here's the White Mire Rift. This is where you get to if you keep working your way north. What I do here, there's three waves of enemies that come out of this thing. So you pull the first lot and dispose of them while standing far enough away from the rift that the next wave don't come out until you want them to. So kill that guy and then walk back, trigger the next lot. Start taking them out, do the same thing. Go back, trigger the third lot. And eventually when they're dead, that rift becomes available. Now nearby the white mire rift is the quest to get the the slith ring that you've got to get by handing in slith necklaces you have three slith necklaces in you get a ring that is at this point in the game if you're a new player and it's your first character it's pretty good it's probably better than anything you've got so far at the moment i've just got one ring that's dropped the other thing near here is a cave with a shrine in it and that cave tends to have a lot of slith so you can always farm that cave if you can't get slith necklaces naturally just by running around so this area here which is just slightly to the west of where that quest giver was this is where you start to get a lot of slith appearing And you can tell you've got these little crater little nest things in the ground they always come out of that you've got a particular slightly higher level kind of slith got the necklaces level nine point of physique point in that node couple of points in the mastery bar trying to work up towards the third node of force wave going to this cave is a whole bunch of slith this is where you hopefully get the Meiji 
types of cliff that drop the necklace. There's one there, you drop one. Carry on working your way north. Get up here, get to this shrine, which I think... Yeah, this will be the second shrine. First one, you have to donate an ether crystal. This is the other type of shrine where you get in for a fight. Once you've cleared all the waves of enemies that come out of the shrine, it is restored. And you have the devotion point. I thought they were all dead, but that guy was just slightly dazed. Now he's dead. There you go, wonderful. We're working on bull, so we start off putting a point in his foot. Once you yeah, once you put a point in the crossroads node in the middle that lights up a certain subset of those constellations, any of the ones that are lit up, you can start putting points into. I thought I'd have a go at this totem. But I'll speed the footage up to double speed because it took me a while to finish this lot off. You don't really want to sit through this whole fight, it's a bit tedious. My damage output's still low at the moment, but it'll get better. There you go, I cut some of the footage out because it was just dragging on. And there you go. Oh, Alright then, one more hit. Two more hits. He's healing, isn't he? Stop healing, mate. annoying when they do that. At last. Yeah, and that um, that levelled me up and got me halfway through the next level as well. So you do totems at a low level, you get quite a lot of XP from it. Point and physique. Staying with soldier, I don't pick the second mastery. Yeah, I hadn't maxed that out, did I? Of course I hadn't. So I'm putting points in that and a couple of points in mastery bar. Point in war cry. Stick war cry on your skill bar. And then get out of the cave. Whenever you come out of there, there's always a load of these outside waiting, which is good because you can just take them all out. You've got a good chance to get some more quest necklaces from these. There you go, there's one drop there. And I've got three. So what I'll do is I'll fight my way across to the boggy bank rift. And then go and cash that fifth quest in. So you go back to the White Mire Rift and then you run up here. You can see that star on the map showing you where to hand this in. Pretty straightforward. You give him the necklaces and you get that ring. I'll just swap it for whichever one. I'll keep it. I'll keep the. If you get anything that does attack damage converted to health, is good on a build where you're using mostly weapon damage or a skill that incorporates a lot of weapon damage. Because gear that does attack damage converted to health is just talking about weapon damage. Now this is where you get those shoulders. So you go from Boggy Bank Rift, you just run across to the west or the left, or however you want to describe it. Now it's a it's a quest target, but I don't even bother getting the quest. It's just a little bit of XP and you don't get a quest reward because the quest reward is at the location where you complete the quest. And it's always the same whether you've got the quest active or not. The only difference is there's no star on the map because I don't have a quest for it, but this is stump. You open this stump and Isaac's Spalders, which is his shoulder arm, is always in there. It just doesn't always have plain affix on it. That's slightly different from what you, you know, you'll get one that's slightly different. Some of the stuff on there will be the same. Like I think it's always got retaliation damage on it. But if you if you haven't got decent shoulders by then, you can go and get that and you can guarantee it will be decent. And you can you can wear that for a while. It's a good recommendation. Well, I've gone back to the foggy bank rift. I'm now heading down to do the Milton Heart quest. That's the lady in the prison 
go and find my brother. Also, a brother's a zombie. You've got to kill him. You've got to collect his item. You've got to go and cash it in, and then she'll give you a decent necklace. But what Milton also does is drops... I keep calling him Milton's hat. The game calls it Milton's cask. That was level 11. Blink and you miss it. You can go back and watch what I put the points into if you want. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, Milton's hat, which is actually called Milton's cask. C-A-S-Q-U-E. And it buffs Blitz. It also, if you're using a shield, you get a bit of extra buff from it. I'm not going to use a shield. You can use a shield if you want. Then you won't be able to spam Force Wave. But maybe you don't want to spam Force Wave. Like I was saying, I'm I'm showing this because you can you can follow this the way I'm doing it and end up with a strong character, exactly the same or very very close to what I've got in this video. So I'm not I'm not using anything that you're not going to be able to get. I'm using a bunch of stuff that you're easily going to be able to get. Here's Milton speed the fight up, cut a bit out of it, the gauges. He doesn't drop his cask this time round. So what I do later on, a little bit later in the video, is I just go back and kill him again. And it drops a second time. You might have to kill him a couple of times. You might be lucky. You might get it on the first attempt. That's the quest to find Milton. This is the necklace that she gives you. Which at this point in the game. If you're a new player. Is probably going to be better than anything you've got. Unless you're pretty lucky with drops. So equip that. I've now got enough scrap. I can go and do Barnabas's quest. And there is a boss target of this quest and there is also a shrine right next to him so from here i mean it's pretty linear run along till you get to this door go through this door then run all the way across to the east until you find the boss kill the boss playing the shrine is level 12 once i get rid of these spiders you can see where i put the points for level 12 assuming i remember to do it point in physique and then I'm putting a point into that and two points into the mastery bar. Eventually that second node and the third node of Force Wave will be maxed out. Here's the boss. Bill off the corruptor. Beat the bite up. I mean you can watch my health bite. Dips a bit, but you know. You're not gonna have a massive problem fighting him. And then this this shrine over here is another one where you donate an ether crystal. So donate an ether crystal. If you haven't got one, just map out, go and get one and come back. But try and have some in your inventory when you go in there. Pointing to Bull. Just working on getting all the way across to that skill on his head before doing anything else. Nip back to Barnabas, catch a quest in. Part of the quest reward, you get your first additional inventory bag so you can carry more stuff around you see it straight away i'll go in and show you there it is on the right it's quite a lot of space to store stuff go and talk to bourbon because you've done all the like local quests now so he'll tell you that you've got to go and find burwich village you're doing well i'm doing well heading towards friendly rep i had a break from the game come back in I'm going to nip up and have another go at fighting Milton. So you all know where Milton is. You take the right-hand fork down the road from that thing, from that rift. Grab an ether crystal whenever you can. Milton spawns around here. He's either in that building just above me or the one to the left. Or he's on the other side of the road, just a slightly across to the west. If you don't cash the quest in, he will always appear as a star on the map, so that might make it easier if you've got to farm him. This time I kill him and I get his um, Milton's cask. There it is. When they drop these monster infrequent items, it's always the first thing that drops. Outside of any boss monster ball of stuff that might drop as well. There it is. Look at that thing. It's brilliant. Buff splits. Buff shield training, which I'm not using, but if you want to use it, fine. But, you know, you'll be deviating from following my wonderful plan on this character. But it doesn't matter. We can always swap the skill points around if you want to go back to following me more closely. Here we go. I, I cut a load of stuff out there where I was killing things. I'm level 13 now. As soon as I rescue this guy and nip back to DC, I'll put the points in. Assuming I remember to do it. 
Oh, actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run up because I'm close to the flooded passage rift. So I'm going to run up to the flooded passage rift, unlock that rift, and then go back to town. Rather than trying to fight all those idiots behind me and that boss thing. He was just some random world mini boss guy that was running around, a hero or whatever. Getting in a flooded passage, nip across to the flooded passage rift, go back to town. This guy that I just rescued, he's like in several different places. He can spawn around that foggy bank rift. You get you get him, you get some uh, rep or whatever, and you also get him as a new shopkeeper. He's my level 13 level up. So I stick a point in that. I get that node on war cry. Because it's halfway decent. Stick another point in that. Back to the flooded passage. Pretty much linear. You work your way to the top right sort of of the map where the shrine is. Kill a load of slith on the way up there. Level up. So I killed quite a lot of things on my way up here. Point in physique. Point in that. Yeah, don't really want to... I think I changed my mind and I undo those points because really you're better off levelling that node up than just maxing out your mastery bar at this point. So I'll go back to the spirit guide and undo that eventually. So yeah, don't do that. Just put points in that third node of um, force wave. Right, I've got one point away now from the skill because you don't have to complete the whole thing to get the skill some of them you do this one you can do it before you get the last the last node here's a boss he drops um if you're lucky you'll drop a force wave monster infrequent amulet if you get it swap it get rid of that sisters thing see i'm getting tougher now he's hit to me but he's another one if you run away he can hit you with some really grim ranged attacks so he's better to just stand yeah see he's dropped his force wave amulet if you get that swap it over for the sisters thing if you don't get it i'd probably say have another couple of goes at killing him to see if you can get the drop otherwise just stick with that sisters thing but it does do a really good job of buffing force wave so you come out here and this is where this is where you unlock the smith so you can start crafting items and the smith does come with quite a lot of default stuff that you don't need to read blueprints to craft because you can already craft them. All right, come on, equip that force wave thing. This is me looking for it, trying to find it in my inventory. Right, so there it is. If you have a look at that, up force wave does a bunch of physical damage. Swap it over for that sisters thing. If you don't get it, keep the sisters thing on until you do get it, Hello, or Driller. don't bother getting it. But I'd say go and get it. You might have to kill him a few times to get it to drop. This is me heading across now. That was the blacksmith I talked to. This is the blacksmith quest. So you just run all the way across to the east, follow this path. I sped it up because it's just a few random fights. There's nothing interesting. You'll get to a wooden bridge eventually. And because you've got the quest active, you should see, you should see him appear on the map as a little star. He's over there on the right. Clear all those prats out of the way. Just got to be carried away with my fighting you get to this wooden bridge go and talk to this guy you can either recruit him or duncan i just said i'm gonna go and recruit duncan map back to where duncan is go and talk to duncan have a nice day see you back at town and then don't you have to wait you just go straight back there and he's there you go back to town, leg it in through the gates. This should all be getting a little bit familiar now. There he is. Hello, mate. Immediately go in there, have a look at what you can do. You can craft a calamity once you get a tainted brain matter, which you'll get when you kill Warden Krieg. Those are the two things not so good. Go into the last tab, find the Ranger's Ribbon, craft the Ranger's Ribbon. There it is. A whole bunch of resistances and whatever random thing it drops with. I think I've got chaos damage on it, which is useless for me, but you might get something better. 
Now I've gone back to the Burwich outskirts rift and I'm going to another burial cave. Not the same burial cave, a different burial cave down here. If that path is blocked, just go slightly to the left and there's another entrance. Go in here. Have a wander around and you will find the shrine. You can see it on the map. It's just slightly below me on that map. On the mini map, you can see it. I get distracted by some crates and go and open them. Get some stuff out of them. And then nip across to the shrine. It's another ether crystal one. Boom. Now this is where I complete, well I don't complete the bull, but I get the skill. And what I did was I put it on Blitz. You might be better off putting it on Warcry. You put it on Warcry, it's got a 100% chance to go off. And it means that Warcry will directly then be well indirectly be doing damage you can see it's that like red circle that comes up you charge in with blitz there's a red circle i would recommend putting that on war cry not on blitz you know it's going to go off every time you fire war cry off if you've got a bunch of things surrounding you just hit it and they're going to take a whole load of damage leave the cave you can either leave through that exit or go through the other one and you want to make your way across to the road that leads north from well roughly north from the Burridge outskirts rift up towards Burridge village you'll find that that road is blocked in places such as there but nearby you'll always find a wall to break or a little alternative route best thing to do explore the whole area if you can kill everything level up as much as you possibly can before you reach Burridge there we go we've got to level 15 I'm going to put a point in physique, as always, and I'm going to stick three points in that third node of force wave. Again, just to reiterate, second and third nodes don't cost additional energy, so you can max those out. Force wave will still cost the same amount of energy, so it won't burn through it when you're using it. As you carry on, you'll come across, well, if you explore the area, you'll come across Old Grim talk to him, send him back to Burridge. He'll give you a bit of XP when you talk to him later. Finally, you get into Burridge village. I recommend clear whoever's standing around before you trigger the rift. Again, there's three waves. So long as you stay a fair distance back, you can clear the wave that's come out for the next lot of here. But at this point, you'll be strong enough to just wade in there and kill them all anyway, so it doesn't make much difference. Once you've killed the three waves, the rift will turn purple, meaning you can use it to go back to wherever you want to go. But before you do anything else, just nip up here to this building on the right and go in and grab the cultist orders off that little plinth. This will give you some much needed reputation gain. This is just me cashing in a quest that doesn't give any rep. The Rennie is this guy over here. You can either choose to side with him or fight him. Best thing to do in normal is fight him and get that much needed rep to get you up to friendly so you can then go and do the quest to get your body armor talk to john bourbon and he'll give you some rep and you will friendly with devil's cross and so if you've done all the quests that i've done by now you'll be friendly because when you cash in the burritch quest you just get xp for that for clearing the burritch portal you don't get devil's crossing rep this lady up here now that you're friendly there you go I'm just showing you that I'm friendly with them now. This lady in the prison cell at the top, she'll now give you a quest to go and get three pieces of fabric from the abandoned waterfront dockland area, which you get to from the Burridge Village Rift. From the rift, you want to head over to the west. I've speeded this up a bit. Sometimes you'll get a blocked path like that. Let's go through this building out of that door. I'll just the minor detour to clear this totem 
you can see now that this the build's getting stronger because those ether totems are pretty bad news but i cleared that one apart from the guy hiding around the back cleared that quite quickly once i picked all the stuff up i carried on so you, you get back onto this path follow this along and then go through a hole in the wall kill these doggies and then have a look at your map and see where the stars are appearing because these three bits of fabric appear in random crates so you have to open the crate fabric pops out with some other stuff pick the piece of fabric up press progress one of three so i've got two more pieces of fabric to find just keep an eye on the mini map it's always in this little area near the water either in a building or up the stairs inside the main building at the end you can't miss them because as soon as you get close you can see them appear on the map there's two there one up to the north and one sort of northwestish. so there's the northern one same deal it's in that crate open the crate pick the fabric up you know find the other one sometimes it's up in that building you just got to search around go back go up here i haven't talked to olgrim yet should have talked to him could have got me xp but never mind there you go and you get your double it's level 20 and it's a nice piece of kit i, I put that on and wore that as soon as i hit 20 unless you've got something massively better i recommend you wear it for the resistances it's decent i'm just putting it in personal stash for now so i don't accidentally sell it go back to where you came from work your way round to the northern part of this you'll find that that's the route to follow to get into the underground area on your way to kill warden creek that building on outside fighting things now but before i go into that i want to go down here and grab this shrine and also rescue kasparov's apprentice kasparov's apprentice is the npc that will allow you to remove components and do other things to gear which will all be very useful later on is a shrine it's a fight when I clear this one, I'll have enough devotion points to complete the bull, and then I can take that point out of the crossroads node because I no longer need it. Because the bull is a self-supporting constellation, it means the one blue point it needs it manages to provide itself, and the devotion screen doesn't care where the points come from. So you don't have to have a separate constellation or node providing a point something that provides the point itself as Kasparov's assistant we'll go back to town talk to her that quest is then cashed in get some rep and some xp from that so if you didn't if you didn't get a quest earlier on with some rep you can always fill in a gap in your devil's crossing rep with that quest I'm going back to where I came from, suddenly remembered I didn't populate that devotion point and I've done it. There you go. Once you fill him in, a load of other ones light up because they were all dependent on having whatever points he provided. Head down through this doorway. This will get you into the warden's cellar. Activate the rift and then pretty much explore around until you find the doorway down into the abandoned storerooms. I haven't bothered showing you the route to take to get there because due to block paths it's not always the same way. Once you get in here again work your way east until you get to this shrine in an area called underground transit. Actually I said abandoned storerooms I meant underground transit. I'm not doing anything with these devotion points for now. work your way north or just at level 18 this you, that's sort of the approximate level you're going to be when you get into the, the fight with Krieg I've gone back to reset some points this is how you use the, the spirit guide click on the mastery bar to undo points unless you've got a node depending on it click on constellation node to undo the node unless you've got something depending on it in which case the game won't let you points in physique points in that and back to the underground transit I work my way up 
to the hidden lab. This is the last rift in here in Act 1. Fight your way through here. I think I'm going to level up again one more time. Yeah, before I fight Krieger up to 19. This is pretty average. I wouldn't say I'm higher or lower level than what a normal new player would be. If you've done plenty of exploring and done most of the quests that you come across, you'd be this level. If you're one or two levels higher or lower, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to make a massive difference. There you go. I've kept it simple. Force wave, it's nodes, point and blitz, point and war cry. Point into Warden Krieg's area. It's not the best Krieg fight ever. He takes quite a lot of health off me. But the thing is, I think this is the first time I've used a health pot. Your health goes down to about the bottom quarter to drop a health pot and you'll, you'll regain health quickly quite a while after you've taken that. He's going to his second phase. When he's in his second phase, face tanking, don't put any distance between you and him or he'll hit you with some really nasty ranged attacks. I mean, he's hitting you there, but it's nowhere near as bad as if he does his ranged stuff. And you can see that fight wasn't particularly difficult. He's gone down. Just smash some of the furniture. Sometimes there's some decent stuff in there. And then you want your you want your mutated or tainted brain matter or whatever it's called. It's in that gold chest. There's always one in there. First time you kill him. There it is. Tainted brain matter. That's the thing you use to craft the calamity relic. So don't forget to do that. Level 18, the calamity relic. So you're going to be able to equip that straight away. If you're level 18 when you kill Krieg. Walk into the is wall while you're trying to go the through the door. <laughs> Talk to Bird and cash that in. Talk to this guy. I'm not going to do this stuff yet. I'm going to nip over to Forgotten Gods and get the Leovinus ring next. Right, straight in here. Talk to the smith. Choose Calamity. Craft Calamity. It auto-populates itself into your relic slot because you haven't got one in there. And get out of here. This guy's appeared because you've completed the Creed quest line. Just agree with him. Jump through his portal, get into Conclave of the Three, follow this path down, past the rift, talk to this guy. Just say, yeah, I'm going to do that. Head just down these stairs to this area, talk to this person, it'll trigger these attacks. Get all the things that come out of this portal. It shouldn't take you long. It didn't take me long. And you should be able to do exactly the same stuff I'm doing. Go back and talk to him. And what I recommend now, walk around, collect all the lore notes, read all the lore notes. There's five I think in this area there's one hidden there you go level 20 so I put that doublet on now there's a hidden door just here I just clicked on it another law note in here and there's a chest with some stuff in it that may or may not be useful for you right level up my level 20 level up point in physique I always go over to Bismail. I mean, opinions vary. I always join Bismail because you can stockpile the quest items to use in Elite and Ultimate if you repeat the, you know, go and kill a bunch of stuff over and over in normal. You don't have to do that. There's your mobility things. They go on your medal and they'll give you a mobility skill. Vanish is good. I like prefer Vanish, actually. I just got Leap just to show it off. Vanish works a bit like the Nightblades... Um, Stealth attack thing, where you, you, zip, you zip across invisibly and hit things, but Leap's all right. You can get either from them, if you get if you don't like Leap, you can get the other one and put it on the medal, it'll just overwrite what's already on there. Go out of the main gate once you've joined that group, get to the first rift, head east and sort of slightly north until you get to the Temple of Osir Rift. And it's the route to the Levinus Ring. I'll speed it up a bit. It's a pretty easy route to follow. You just stay on this path through these broken buildings until you get to this tree. Then you go past that and then head right through a gap in the rocks, which you can't see. But it is there. Here we go. Bang. There's the gap in the rocks. Hidden refuge. Walk round here. 
This shrine's asking for whatever that was. Level 21. And there's the Leobinus ring. That's just showing you how to get there. You can pause that if you want and play it slower. Leobinus ring's in that vase. Break the vase, pick it up. Replace whatever. Well, I, you leave that slith ring on. Just replace the other one. So you've got the slith ring and the Leobinus ring on. Leobinus ring is 24% elemental resistance, which is massive on a new character. It's going to sort out a lot of your resistance issues. Let's put points in the mastery bar. do a quick recap on gear try and explain a bit more about what i was talking about earlier on in the video this thing why is that good because it does physical damage because it buffs physical damage and internal trauma damage which is the damage over time version of physical damage which if you look at force wave there's physical damage done so anything buffs that's good blitz does physical damage so you're going to be buffing that that thing does main and damage that's fine that's got ball rush on it ball rush does physical damage and internal trauma damage so that internal trauma damage will be getting buffed by that percentage increase on that weapon that's why that weapon is good what you don't want is something that converts physical damage to a different damage type but sure what i mean we'll have a look at this shop here so this guy's selling some of these okay that's similar to the one i've got it's got a it actually adds on some extra physical damage. It's got an attack speed buff, which is pretty good. That now, notice that's converting 34%, like a third of your physical damage to fire damage. You are not buffing fire damage, so you don't want that. Later on, you might take a second mastery that uses fire damage. You might start specking into fire damage. For now, no. That is going to take away a whole load of the damage that you're doing because it's taking away 34% physical damage and you're buffing physical damage. That thing's doing the same thing. It's converting even more physical damage to vitality damage. So no, you don't want that. So although that might look good, you've got like, oh, look, there's loads of words on the screen. Got to be good. That thing is better. Trust me. All right, let's see what this other bloke's got over here. That's sort of all right, but we're not doing piercing damage. Okay, I'll come back to that. There you go. Although that's buffing physical internal trauma, it's converting almost half your physical damage away to fire damage, which you're not buffing. So no, look at this. Right, 9% of attack damage converted to health. Now, although you take a bit of a dip in the damage you're dealing, What's interesting there is it's got plus 7% casting speed. Force Wave actually works off casting speed, not attack speed. And that 9% of attack damage converted to health, that only costs 2,000 and something, and I've got that much. I'm going to buy that, and I'm going to swap this over. So it's worth going to a shop, and you think, well, it's shop item, it's a yellow item, it's rubbish. No, that's not rubbish, that's really good. That 9% of attack damage converted to health. If you have a look at some devotions that do attack damage converted to health. If you have a look at some of these. 4%. That's a skill that does 20% on the actual skill. 3%. 6%. 6% is massive, really, for a devotion. And you're getting 9% off that weapon. Which is really good. Good for this build. So, yeah. So, you can go around and you can get that. So, shop around. They're cheap. See what you can get. You might get something that drops. It's really good. Try not to get anything that converts physical damage to some other damage type. Because it's, it's going to be... It might sound good. It might look pretty. It's going to be detrimental to what you're trying to do with this build. There's the quest reward ring. There's the quest reward amulet. There's the target farmable helmet that comes from the guy that you have to kill to complete the quest to get that. Milton, he's nearby, up by the foggy bank rift. You can get him easily. That's off the shambler 
the end of the run through the flooded passage. So you can farm him and get one of those. Isaac Spaulders is a is a one-off item that's always in the same place. And you can go and get that. That's a quest reward. You're always going to get the same sort of thing. It's pretty good. Health, defensive ability, energy regen, a bunch of resistances. I either found that or bought it, probably found it. Found that, found that, found that, crafted that, default crafting recipe at the smith. Crafted that, default crafting recipe. Once you kill Krieg and get the tainted brain matter, you can get one of them. Yeah, it does fire damage. Don't worry, well, it doesn't do fire damage. It buffs fire damage, but don't worry about that. It adds physical damage to your weapon attack. It's got a chance of an increase to physical damage. Puts your offensive ability up, and it's got that calamity thing that fires off. So if you're attacking something, let's go and attack this. That was calamity. So this is just a normal default attack. This isn't force wave. And every now and again, if you're lucky, we'll see calamity. There you go. And there's force wave. Calamity doesn't fire off very frequently, but it's just there every now and again. There you go. Blitz and Warcry. And Warcry's got that Bulls Rush on it now, so you notice it did damage. And it's got a 100% chance of activating. You watch the, watch the red ring come out and watch them take damage from this. There you go. That's that. I've got that on Warcry now. I recommend sticking that on Warcry. Blitz is doing damage on its own. That's making Warcry do extra damage. Or some damage. I'll just get the overlay up one last time. You can have a look at that. What it says about the weapon is still relevant. I mean, I just bought that. You might get something that drops this a lot better. I'll just use the Grim Tools build calculator to recap what I did with the points. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5, level 6, level 7, level 8. Level 9. Hang on. <laughs> Level. I don't want to do that. Don't do that. Level 9. Level 10. Level 11. Level 12. Level 13. Level 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Grab that, I reckon. I might not have done it exactly that way. That's probably the best way to do it. As always, I completely cocked up. I well, I thought I'd recorded about another 5-10 minutes of components and fighting. And of course, I didn't have my recorder running because I'm a bloody idiot. But what you missed out on was I bought that thing from a shop here. I put components on there. I had a bristly fur. had a couple of bristly furs. I stuck that on there. A couple of roiling bloods to boost physical damage and OA on there. Stuck a corpse dust on that. I think that was all I had. Oh yeah, chip thing. I'm not using the skill, but it gives a bit of extra physical damage to that weapon. Then I hopped over to the Temple of Osir just to demonstrate what the build is like at 21. I was calling out, right, watch what Warcry does. Blitz, vanish. 
Vanish is on the medal. I replace Leap with Vanish because I like the distance you get from it. That's Blitz. That's Vanish. We'll do it again. Blitz. Vanish. Warcry. Force Wave. Blitz. Warcry. Skills not ready. We'll just wait. There you go. There's quite a range on Blitz, so I'll try and get that guy right over there, yeah? And then Vanish. Come on, do it. Okay. If you look at these things, they're 22. They're, yeah, they're my level just above or just below. Yeah, if you just notice then on the screen it said Bull Rush had leveled up. The way devotions level up, it's any time you gain XP, whether you're fighting or getting it from quests or whatever. It's not when this is used, it's when you gain XP, that skill will level up. Just in case you were wondering about that. Right, I reckon that will do. If you watch the whole thing, congratulations and massive thanks. If you skip through and just watch the bits you're interested in, more power to you. Excellent. Recommend doing that. I do that when I watch a lot of videos. If you have got any opinion on the detail level, whether any of this was too confusing or complicated for new players, let me know in the comments. I'll try and address it in future videos. And if you've got any ideas about how I could have done this better, let me know. I mean, obviously, I could have gone with Blitz with a shield and pumped Blitz a bit more. It might have been a bit of a better build overall, but I wanted to just concentrate on quest rewards. There's a quest reward. That's a quest reward. Easily findable items. Easily farmable items. Legendary item you just walk up and pick up. And a weapon that you just buy from shop. You'll get a better thing in a drop. I mean, the more you play, the more likely you are to get a better thing in a drop. Just don't get anything that converts physical damage to another damage type unless you are specifically buffing that damage type because you'll just lose out. Right, I hope you enjoyed that one. I'll catch you all in the next video.